Well, this morning I'm here with my uh, new good friend Ben Freeth, and we've been uh, moving our pastured chicken flock out here to a new spot on the farm. They're enjoying some nice grass, and uh, we've been having a good time visiting. Ben is from uh, Zimbabwe and has a background there in both uh, farming and also justice issues and things, and has thought a lot about. Uh, different issues related to farming and the land and um, as we look in the U.S. to a lot of changes with um, ownership of land from family farms to uh, more corporate large-scale farms that was something we were talking about earlier today and I said we should just do a short video chatting about you know what we feel like is, is what God wants to see with the land and stewardship of the land and some of the benefits of that um, in, you know, what's best, family farms, corporate farms, like what, what, should we, what should we be thinking about as far as Christians related to that? And uh, so Ben, I'd love for you to share a little bit of your experience um, from Zim as far as uh, you've seen a lot of family farms, you've seen things going corporate. What are some of the pros and cons and challenges and things that you've seen? Mm. Well, we, we came from a family farm, so we understand family farms and we've seen how through the years family farms have just been so incredibly resilient through, through very hard times, through uh, times of uh, severe uh, economic depression, through times of drought, through times of floods, through times of war, through times of... Um, that, that really are hard mm. um, and and Africa can be a very hard place to uh, be able to exist um, so family farms have have been able to weather through those times in a way that um, you know corporate entities cannot you know corporate entities their bottom line is is all that counts and so when their bottom line is not looking looking good they mm. They pack up and they and, and they leave. Yeah. Um, and the other the other part of that is that um, because the bottom line is is what drives them um, uh, so totally, um, they kind of put up with things and get involved with things that are morally um, very often very dubious. You know. Mm. So so it's it's not the corporates that will hold. Um, government to account when when government starts to do things that are uh, that are, that are clearly morally wrong against mm. what we believe against our Christian faith you know because as we read in in, in, in Timothy um, because the love of money their bottom line is is their guiding kind of force because the love of money is is what drives them um, Evil things are able to then be perpetuated, mm. and and um, that's the that's the big thing that I've really noticed is, is corporates will not stand up, um, whereas you know obviously obviously it depends on the family, but but some families um, will decide well actually what is morally right is is more important. You never get that with a corporate. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and we I mean we obviously see in Genesis uh, the first farming enterprise the first you know garden was tended um, not just you know Maine was there Adam was there mm. but even looking at him God was like it's not good for him to be alone like this there needs to be mm. relationships here there needs mm. to be you know the family and uh, and then that motive comes from it's not just a you know a money-making venture mm -hmm. it's more of a life Mm -hmm. um, that's full of relationships. You mm -hmm. you see, especially in Scripture, related to the way God set up the nation of Israel, the importance of having family land that has mm -hmm. legacy related mm -hmm. to it. Um, when you have your kids are going to be the ones po possibly that benefit from that, then you have mm -hmm. a, an incentive to leave it better than you found it, not mm -hmm. just to use up the land. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, mm -hmm. we see, see a lot mm -hmm. of benefits of that. As mm -hmm. far as, um, you know, there may be people that are in agriculture um, or maybe people that are interested in agriculture but not farming. What are some things people could can do to promote family farming and um, you know that, that you've seen that could be a positive way to 
to influence that in a good direction? That's a that's a difficult question <laughs> coming coming from Zimbabwe, where where well, I suppose it's a little bit like here in America. Um, you know, the family farm is is very much on the on the decline. You know, there's 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 a lot of people that, well, in, in Zimbabwe, it's it's through um, government kind of. Uh, destroying the family farm. The government in, in Zimbabwe has over the years been incredibly oppressive and um, has realized that that corporates are actually a better a better kind of bet for them mm. you know, because corporates at the end of the day will will toe the line with government whereas families you know may may not. Mm. Um, so you know, as far as, as promoting family farms and this sort of thing is concerned, I think you know really it's um, it's up to up to families to uh, visit w where there are family farms and build relationship and just see what's what's going on. You know what's going on at Noah's farm. Mm. Um, how can we learn from Noah? And you know the the. The love that is extended on a on a family farm cannot really be extended on a, on a corporate. You know, mm. I mean, I've I've arrived here kind of out of the blue from Zimbabwe <laughs> and and kind of been welcomed into the family and, um, you know, already feel part of the family after after just a couple of days because, um, you know, that's how families work or fam mm. how families should work anyway. Yeah. And and, and um, but I think it's I think it's really about you know, getting out there and, and, and finding out and seeing how God um, can can lead us as families into a way that is uh, close to God's creation. Because certainly speaking for myself, when I'm close to God's creation, all around me here, I feel so much uh, more whole as a person. When I'm in a when I'm in a, a man-made environment, in, 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 a, in an urban environment, in a, um, a, a away from God's creation, um, you know, I, I, I find, speaking for myself, I, I find that I, I, I need to get away after a time, mm. and I need to mm -hmm. get, get recharged and, and get back into God's creation. And, and you know, Jesus often used to do the same. He, yeah, he that's used right. to. Uh, leave the crowds, and he used to go off to the mountains, go off to a wild place, and and be able to commune with his father, and be able to see, see his his creation all around him, and, mm. and be regenerated um, through that. And you know, so I think it's I think it's important that 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 city folk um, look at it as as an option. Mm. You know, look at it as something that. Um, is possible even in the 21st century where we think that uh, we have now become divorced from from the land divorced from from where our food comes from each day um, right divorced you know from from god's creation and um you know we as christians need to to look seriously about where we have got to uh, in just a very very short period of time you mm. know most people will have will have had grandfathers or, or grandmothers or, or great grandparents that that you know will have been involved in some way in agriculture um, but as in the next generation um, virtually no one has been involved with growing things mm. and the joy of growing things and seeing uh, things grow around us and and um, you know I think we owe it to our children to um, to see the wonder of that yeah well and there's such such freedom, you know, in family farming, whereas, you know, you talk about the corporate farming, mm -hmm. just like we see family businesses versus, you know, the corporate businesses in the U.S., you know, there's um, a lot more freedom to be able to run your business the way you want it rather than when you work for a big company. Mm -hmm. There's all the policies and guidelines and stuff that, mm -hmm. you know, can tend to be a bit more just <clears throat> mainstream. And, uh, but also I think even for people that don't farm, uh, we all eat, right? So mm -hmm. we all are impacted by 
farms mm -hmm. and it's like a lot of people that buy from us as at our farm they buy from us because they say we want to buy from people that we trust that we know that we have a relationship with and because we as farmers what happens to us impacts the people that are eating food mm -hmm. and the choices that people make of their where they purchase from mm -hmm. impacts the farmers as mm -hmm. well and so that's anybody can you know make small changes mm -hmm. to be able to find farms where they they're voting with their dollars in a sense mm -hmm. you know of mm -hmm. these are the type of farms I feel like are reflecting what God mm -hmm. wants to see mm -hmm. let's you know start going out of our way a bit to support those mm -hmm. and encourage them in what is difficult you know a, a difficult calling at times because of like we said farming mm -hmm. is is uh, has its own special challenges, but uh, especially when you start competing with the corporate mm -hmm. model, uh, we really have to to build on what we we have a monopoly on, which is relationship mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you can't replace, mm -hmm. no matter how cheap the food is or efficient mm -hmm. it is or whatever. And mm -hmm. and to show because people know at the end of the day that is really what we long for. That's mm -hmm. really what we value, and that's really where the best trust mm -hmm. is built. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for sharing your right. thoughts and uh, just encourage everybody to keep thinking about, you know, in every area of life we want to say, how can we best reflect the God we serve in the way we do things and the future of agriculture, you know, is, is very much impacted by how faithful we are as Christians to, to look for those answers and try to then make, um, you know, take actions in our lives to be more consistent, growing to be more and more consistent with with Christ and who he is in the way that we do things. So thanks so much for watching and uh, thanks so much Ben for, for sharing. Thank you. <laughs>